Beetle. Leaping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the friend of the unfortunate, enemy of criminals. A mysterious, all-powerful character, a problem to the police. But a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk but stronger than steel. Today's episode of The Blue Beetle is entitled Smashing the Arson Ring. Numerous fires of suspicious nature have stirred the civil authorities to a point where a concerted drive is underway to discover who and what is back of this unprecedented wave of mysterious conflagrations. Has the city's fire inspection department become obsolete? Is the increase of destructive fires in abandoned factories and old law tenements due to coincidence? Or is an organized campaign of wholesale arson being engineered by a mastermind? As our story opens, patrolman Dan Garrett, who in secret is really the Blue Beetle, discusses the situation with his friend and confidant, Dr. Franz, the chemist. And Danny, do you really believe that there's a ring of professional arsonists who are setting these fires? I'm positive. You know, we've had a long dry spell. There's such a thing as spontaneous combustion. I know that. Then on what do you base your suspicions? The fact that in each case, the burned building had been vacant for a long time or had been operating on a losing basis and was heavily insured. Like those old tenements on River Street. But surely the owners would be taking a terrible risk of discovery if they set them on fire. Not if I hired professional arsonists. They're pretty clever, you know. Yes, but look at the property loss. And in some cases, loss of life. The property losses in each case, I've found, are all covered by fire insurance. A loss of life, such as in that last tenement fire, is another thing. That's equivalent to wholesale murder. You're right, Danny. And if someone deliberately set those fires, that person should pay the extreme penalty. They will. If I can get the evidence I need to convict them. Well, what do you intend doing? I'm asking the chief to put me on special duty to investigate these mysterious fires. With Officer Manigan? Yes, if Mike wants to work on them with me. Well, he will, all right. He likes excitement as much as you do. I know. I can't stand inactivity as long as there are criminals to run down. I'll only be happy when I'm on their trail. Well, I do hope you'll always be as successful in the future as you have been in the past. Oh, there go the fire engines. That's my exit cue. So long, Doc. From now on, Dan Garrett's a smoke eater. Now he's going right into the building. Yeah. And there's another cop going right after him. Why, they'll be burned to a crisp in that inferno. Boy, look at the flames pouring out of that window underneath. Yeah. It looks like curtains for them babies. Not yet. Look. The fireman just got a hose up that ladder. They're pouring a stream of water into the windows. Too late, I'll bet. Uh, that's the end of the cops and the girl. Yeah. Gee, what a crash. Look, look up there on the roof. Yeah, it's the two cops and the girl. Oh, well, what do you know about that? They went up instead of down. Just in time, too. Firemen are slanting a ladder over to them from the hook and ladder truck. Yeah, but it won't reach. It's too short. Well, why don't they jump across to the next roof? It's too far. 20-foot gap. They'd never make it. The fireman could stretch a net to a fake They can't get near enough to the building. That fire's too hot. See it pour out of those lower windows. I guess they're trapped. No, no. No, look. Yeah. 
One cop's hanging to the edge of the roof by his hands. Now the other one's crawling over him. What? What are they going to do? The second cop's hanging from the first cop's feet. Look, he can almost reach the ladder. Now, there's a fireman going up the ladder. Say, the girl's climbing down over the two cops hanging there. Look out! Gee, she almost lost hold. The fireman's got her. She's safe. She's safe. She's safe. She's safe. She's safe. Yeah, but, say, it looks like she fainted. Well, how them two cops going to get down? I don't know. They're still hanging up there. I'm not backing the hook and ladder truck a bit. Now, now the end of the ladder is right under him. Watch him. There he goes. He dropped. He made it. He made it. He made it. Yeah. He made it. Now there's only the cop hanging to the roof. He can't make it, though. Who is he? Uh, looks like patrolman Dan Garrett. The other cop was Manigan, his pal. And I've got it all right. Yeah. But how's he going to get out of this jam? Well, look. The fire's licking up to him now. He's trying to climb back onto the roof. There he goes. He made it. How is he going to get down from there? Search me. Boy, I wouldn't like to be in his place. Hey, he's disappeared. No, he ain't. There he is. He's got a long pole. What's he going to do? Pole walled across to the other roof. Gosh, I hope he makes it. There he goes. He made it. He made it. Oh, boy. He ought to get a medal for this day's work. you distinguished yourself at the fire today. I almost extinguished myself. It was all I could do to hold on when Manigan and the girl were both hanging on to me. He's no lightweight. Uh, I'm proud of you, my boy. That took nerve. You've got to have nerve to make good on the police force. I know, but you covered yourself with glory. The important thing is, I got some valuable information. Yeah? From whom? The girl I rescued, Elsie Williams. Yes? I talked to her at the drugstore where the fireman took her when she fainted. She worked for Gordon. Sort of a secretary and rent collector. Is that how she came to be in that building when the fire started? Yes, yeah, she was collecting rents. She told me she saw a one-armed man leave the cellar entrance in a hurry as she entered the building. Well, what's suspicious about that? He might have been a friend of the janitor. Miss Williams told me that she'd seen him in a huddle with her employer early this morning, before the fire. But that still doesn't prove anything. Now wait. As he left, she heard him say to Gordon, Don't worry, your troubles will soon be over. We won't miss. Has Gordon been having trouble of some sort? Yes, financial trouble. Been losing money on his houses. He also has a loft building that's been empty for months. Mm, that certainly looks suspicious. Yes. And I figure my trail begins with Mr. Gordon. Well, what are you going to do? Call upon Mr. Gordon and make him talk. <laughs> Patrolman Dan Garrett to see you. I won't see one. I'm busy. He said it's very important to you. Oh, well, I'll see him. Patrolman Dan Garrett, Mr. Gordon. Oh, come in, officer. Oh, what's on your mind? I'm very busy this afternoon. Fire this morning and everything. Very upsetting. Heavy financial loss. To you or to the insurance company? What's that? I asked you to whom the fire was a heavy financial loss. To you or the insurance company? Now, look here. Just because you wear that uniform, don't think that you can be impertinent to the taxpayers. I'll report now, you Just to... a minute, Mr. Gordon. I'm here on official business. Your buildings were heavily insured. You stand to gain rather than lose by this fire today. The fire chief reports evidence of incendiarism. What do you mean? How can you report such a thing? I'll have his now, badge... Now, look, I'll... Mr. Gordon, I'm here to help you if I can. You tell me who the ringleaders are in this arson racket... And I'll do what I can to get you off lightly when your case comes up in court. Court? Wait, who, who said anything about court? I did. You're going to be arrested shortly. On suspicion of being party to a conspiracy to defraud the fire insurance company. No, no. You can't do that. Now, now, now. Why don't you break down? And give me the information I'm after. Well, what do you want to know? Who was the one-armed man who was seen to leave the building just before the fire? One-armed man? Why, I... I don't know and, anyone. And uh, who had a confidential talk with you 
earlier this morning. My secretary has oh, been Oh, bring over. your secretary into this. After all, she almost lost her life today, collecting rents for you. All right, I'll tell you. His name is Joe Durando. He's called Stumpy. He works for the Modern Wrecking and Construction Company. Mm. They wreck buildings and construct buildings. Get you coming and going. Quite a profitable business, I'd say. Now, uh, listen. I didn't want to do this thing. They threatened to undermine my tenements so they'd collapse. If I didn't hire them to burn them down, the buildings collapsed, I'd get no insurance at all. But it'd be a total loss. So that's their racket. What did they get out of it? $1,000 down and 20% of the insurance. Mm, not bad. And I suppose they get the job of rebuilding. Yes, that's part of the contract. Who's the head of the company? I don't know. Stumpy always spoke of his boss as uh, the skipper. Stumpy must have been in the Navy at one time. I don't know that. What does the gang use that makes the fires spread so quickly? Gasoline? No, nothing. Will you go down with me to the D.A. and tell him what you've just told me? Now, look here, officer. My life isn't worth a dime right now for talking with Don't you. Don't worry. The D.A. will have you guarded day and night. <coughs> what was that? Boy, that sounded like my secretary's voice. Come on, let's see who it is. Yeah. Look, look, those men, they're carrying her off. You're right. Hey, stop. Look out, look out. Hey, okay, Chopper, I'll fix you for sticking your nose. You know what? Don't concern you. Come on, Gordon, take a walk with me. Oh, no. Come on. I've got this gun in your back, so don't open your trap. You and me is going for a little ride. The skipper wants to see you. <laughs> Later that evening, high up in one of the city's skyscrapers, Stumpy is reporting to his skipper. You see, it was like this, skipper. Yes? I seen the couple go into Gordon's office, and I figured maybe Gordon's secretary has spilled the beans to Garrett after he rescued her. Uh Uh-huh. So I called some of the boys. Of course. Then when the couple stayed in with Gordon so long, well, I figured the heat was being turned on. So I decided to pick up Gordon as well as a girl. You took a terrible risk by kidnapping them in broad daylight. Well, what else could I do, Skipper? The heat was on. Where are they now? I got them tied up in one of your barges down at the end of River Street. You bring them out to my yard about midnight. We'll see how much they've spilled to the police. Okay, Skipper. And keep away from waterfront saloons. If you get drunk tonight, you're all through. Sure, sure, Skipper. (laughs) You can trust me. I won't take not even one drink. You'd better not if you know what's good for you. I've got a couple of jobs for you tomorrow, and I want you sober. And you can trust me, Skipper. I know where my bread and butter comes from. All right. Remember that, if you want to be able to continue eating bread and butter. What will happen to Elsie Williams and the brave little secretary? Will Gordon be bumped off for talking? Can Dan Garrett recover from the blow on the head... In time to catch the thugs? Or will he lose the trail completely? 